Question number six, Chris Bishop. Oh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. To the Minister of Finance, how is the government using a social investment approach that aims to improve the lives of vulnerable New Zealanders and reduce costs for taxpayers? Mr. The Honourable Amy Adams. Mr. Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Finance, the social investment approach involves government better understanding the New Zealanders we support, what services will best improve their lives, and where that intervention will make the biggest difference to reduce the numbers showing up in hospitals or prisons, not succeeding at school or stuck on welfare. Mr Speaker, we're building a world-class data analytics system to support this, and we're now able to identify, for example, a group of high-risk young people that will cost taxpayers on average $320,000 each by the age of 35, some of them over $1 million each. By looking at the evidence of what are the best interventions for each member of that group, we have the opportunity to deliver services that may involve a higher upfront cost, but that will reduce the long-term costs and, most importantly, improve those people's lives. Supplementary. Supplementary question. Chris Bishop. Thank you, Mr Speaker. How is this different to previous approaches to social spending? The Hon. Amy Adams. Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister of Finance, we spend approximately $61 billion each year on social sector spending. However, we only know the effectiveness or the specific effectiveness of a very small proportion of this. The public sector has also traditionally struggled to understand the impact of spending in one area on results in another area. We have to change this. Social investment is different because ministers, agencies and those delivering services will be better informed and better aligned through advances in our use of technology and data to understand the areas of greatest need, how the government can best direct our e efforts and do more of what works. Supplementary question, Grant Robertson. Uh, does the social investment approach offer anything to the 400 workers and their families in Dunedin who today discovered with Cadbury's manufacturing operations closing they'll be out of work? Or is the government's form of investment just in theoretical ideas and not practical regional development? Mr Speaker. The Honourable Amy Adams. Mr Speaker, well, the social investment approach is about targeting how our social services best support those New Zealanders when they find themselves in times of need. So that if people are out of a job, we're, we're comfortable, comfortable and confident that our welfare system is best targeted to support them in a meaningful way to get back to the independence that we know New Zealanders want. Supplementary question, Chris Bishop. Thank you, Mr Speaker. What examples are there of how this could reduce future costs for the government? Mr. The Speaker. Honourable Amy Adams. Well, on behalf of the Minister of Finance, the work that the Ministry of Social Development did on the welfare liability showed that the future Sorry. lifetime cost has reduced by $12 billion over the last four years as a result of our welfare reforms well based on this approach. The justice sector is another good example of where social investment can make a real difference. For example, we now know that a nine-year-old boy who is known to child, youth and family and whose parents are on a benefit is likely to offend on average 3.3 times before he's 24. However, applying a social investment approach and the right interventions with his parents can lead to a more than 90 per cent reduction in his predicted offending. This reduces cost to taxpayer, improves lives and means fewer victims.